So welcome everybody. I'm Heather Ostro. To give you a little like history of like me writing this, um, I really wrote it because I wanted to see like an Indiana Jones style action franchise with a woman at the forefront. That was really my my kind of inspiration for it. Um, and I'm weird, so I like ghosts. So that's how that came about. And um, it was really important to me also that like, whenever you do see kind of an Indiana Jones style female, you know, if it's like Terminator or uh, Tomb Raider, it's always written, it's always written or created by a man, even if there's like a female director, like in Wonder Woman's case. And I loved Wonder Woman and I love Sarah Connor <laughs> and I'm a re reluctant Buffy lover now. Um, but, uh, you know, Buffy. yeah, I love <laughs> Buffy and I love, I adore Sarah Michelle Gellar, hence my hair. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted something written by a woman. So, you know, write what you want to see. Right. So, uh, mm -hmm. that's where this started. And since then it's been, it was an Austin second rounder last year, which was really cool. And it's been, you know, kind of getting some traction. So hopefully this, you know, gets it to another level. Interior suburban house evening, super silver Springs, Maryland, 2001. Soft intermittent whispers carry us to the second floor hallway. Menacing shadows cast weird shapes from the stairs all the way up the wall. Partially lit, the smiling faces in the family portraits are fragmented. Louder and faster, the whispers reach their peak until silence. Little Raven Winters, seven years old, princess skirt over her jeans, cautiously enters. With a serious face, she surveys the area. To her, the hallway is endless. The doorways, the bookcases, even the entry table look abstract as they tower over her. Indeed, Little Raven is the only normal-sized thing we see. She's about to continue down the hall when creak, her head turns to the hallway closet. Slow to move, she creeps to the door. Her hand on the knob, she holds her breath and pulls. Greeted by only towels, her shoulders slump. Suddenly, there's a high-pitched meow. Raven jumps as Expo, the family cat, rushes out of the closet and down the stairs. Flash, lightning illuminates the hallway. Raven's eyes look to the window at the end of the hall. Thunder crashes, tree leaves dance in the wind as the sky grows darker. A second flash hits. This time it reveals an unidentifiable glowing ghost standing in the closet behind Raven. It's gone at the third flash. The door at the end of the hallway swings closed. Bam, Little Raven jumps again. Gathering her courage, she swallows and cautiously walks towards the door. Upstairs office. Books surround a, compute, a dark computer. Across from the desk sits an old flaky leather couch. The nearby window curtains are still. Wind whistles as Raven enters and heads for the window. Sensing something, she stops and turns towards the blank green wall. Climbing onto the couch, Little Raven waits before putting her palm on the wall. Slowly, the glowing blue outline of another hand presses from inside the wall. A triumphant smile spreads across Raven's face. I found you. The outline disappears. Aren't you going to come out? Nothing. Crow. Suddenly, the glowing ghost materializes through the wall. Boo! Raven falls back to the floor, thump. <sighs> Little Raven and Crow, once eight years old, now a ghost, lie laughing next to each other. Seeing them together, we know this ghost is no threat. You're so silly. Raven? Red alert. Both Raven and Crow turn sharply towards the door. Shh. Yes? What are you doing up there? Playing Star Trek. The two girls, smiling, raise their hands, part their fingers, and give the Vulcan salute. Bottom of the stairs, Raven's mother, 38, stands at the banister. The origins of those mysterious whispers are her guests, lively as ever in the nearby living room. Well, keep it down. We have company. Upstairs. Okay. We have company. A flash of lightning erupts. 
The lights flicker. Little Raven's smile disappears. Crow grabs her hand. Nothing to be scared of. Little Raven nods. Echoing thunder is followed by even more lightning. The lights flicker again. Little Raven holds tighter to her friend's hand. Eager to help, Crow looks around. Before landing on the nearby window seat, her eyes widen. Smiling, Crow motions for Raven to follow. By the window seat. Tap, tap. Crow pats the middle panel at the base of the seat. Her fingers move to the right edge. She pulls hard, but the board doesn't move. Raven! My mom isn't going to like this. Grabbing hold of the opposite side, Raven pulls. Snap. The panel flies free. The girls stare into the dark, square hole. Crow motions for Raven to reach inside. Inside. Seriously? Crow looks directly into her eyes. Trust me. Lightning flashes as little Raven shuts her eyes and reaches into the darkness. Her eyes burst open. Pulling out her arm, she opens her palm. A dusty gold chain drops and hangs up her fing fingers. At the bottom swings a perfect sphere made of crystal. Watch. Crow points her finger at the crystal. Concentrating, her finger turns a light shade of blue. Buzz, buzz, electrical currents pulsate from her finger into the sphere. It grows until the sphere is a little ball of white light. Little Raven's mouth hangs open. It's magic. So you won't be scared. Flash, crash, the storm continues to rise. The, lightning, the lights flicker, but no longer scared, Little Raven quickly puts on the necklace. Grateful, she smiles. The girls hug. Was this yours? Crow's triumphant smile turns into an upset frown. I don't remember. Shaking her head, frustrated, parts of Crow's body start to fade in and out. Panicked, Raven shakes her head. It's okay. I'll help you remember. We'll find your name, where you came from. We'll find everything. You hear me, Crow? I promise. I'll help you. As Little Raven takes Crow's hand, we switch to Crow's perspective. It's like looking underwater without goggles. Everything is blurry. Everything, that is, except Little Raven. She is perfectly clear. Come back. Crow returns to her completely transparent self. Raven breathes a sigh of relief. The light emanating from the crystal fades. Smiling, Raven pulls Crow towards the door. Come on. Living room. Thump, thump. Annoyed, Raven mother's, Raven's mother looks up from her conversation to the shaking ceiling. Little Raven's room. With Crow by her side, Raven fires toy phasers. Pow, pow. Glittered stars cover the walls. A pile of Barbies lie next to, the, next to toy starships. Four Star Trek posters, one on each wall, reflect the different eras. Original, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. We got him on the run, Commander. Raven, I told you, we have- Shocked, Raven's mother stands with her mouth open. Little Raven nervously looks between her mother and Crow. Mom, don't freak out. Crow- Raven's mother screams, grabs little Raven, and runs out of the room. Bottom of the stairs, the guests gather as Raven's mother quickly descends. Get out, everybody get out. Is everything okay? We have to leave now. Stop! What's going on? Crash, a bolt of lightning strikes. Zap, the lights in the house go dark. It's her. No, mom, you have to listen to me. Crow wouldn't do this. Who's Crow? A glowing light gets everyone's attention. They turn to see little Crow materializing. Her glowing hand reaches up for little Raven. Raven? Little Raven, little Raven reaches down. It's my friend. Terrified, the adults scream. Raven's mother quickly moves for the door. Struggling, little Raven stretches her hand as far as it will go, but it's no use. She's pulled away from Crow. Interior, exterior, tan car continues. Tires burn as the car speeds away. Little Raven, tear, little Raven tears down her face, looks out the back window. She watches as Crow, now standing at her bedroom window, 
starts to fade in and out, all the time getting smaller and smaller. Raven grabs tight hold of the crystal sphere necklace and tucks it inside her shirt. The oncoming storm has arrived. Lightning flashes through the sky. Interior, Moles Design Center, evening, present day. The lightning's flash from the past carries us to the present. Fluorescent lights buzz over the cans of paint, boxes of brushes, and all the other craft materials that line the mini shelves. Super, 20 years later. Raven Winters, now 27, walks through the quiet, seemingly empty aisles. Hanging from her neck is the same crystal necklace. I know you're in here. A blue energy bolt travels through a fluorescent bulb. Crack, the lights spark. Raven jumps and instinctively grabs her necklace. Now cloaked in darkness, Raven shakes off the eerie atmosphere and recovers with a deep breath. A little nighttime shopping in the dark. I like it. My name's Raven. What's... Swoosh. She's violently lifted off her feet and thrown through the air. Autumn artisan aisle. Crash. Fake leaves and vines fly everywhere as she lands in a big basket. Hurrying, she cranks her head up and sees nothing. The crystal on her necklace, however, is glowing bright white light. As the glow from her necklace fades, Raven brushes off a vine of bright orange leaves and gets up. Center of the store, a stream of salt drops to the floor as Raven, carrying the jar, walks. One end meets the other. A circle of salt has been created. Turning, she sees lines of beads floating down the aisle. They're followed by a stretch of yarn that quickly strings itself through the beads and continues down the aisle. I'm here to help you. Out of her duffel bag come three small holders followed by three large prisms. See? This and these. I'm gonna use them to open a doorway. She sets the first holder, silver with three legs at the 12 o'clock position outside the salt circle. You'll be able to cross over. Be at peace. There's uh -huh. a crowd. crash. A whole shelf is swept clean. Right, tools. Crash. This time, the entire shelf flies from the aisle. Another, then another. Thinking, Raven takes the large prism and sets it in the holder. Right, tools. Open area on the left. Crash, crash. Raven struggles to focus as she places the second prism in the holder that sits at the eight o'clock position outside the salt circle. She looks down the aisle, aisles in the store. We see the flickering, glowing outline of a hand pick up a ruler, throws it. Next, an X-Acto knife, throws that. Open area on the left. Light tools. Open space by the door. With the third and last prism in hand, Raven hurries to the holder that sits the five o'clock position outside the salt circle when crash, another display falls to the ground. I don't, what are the right? Her eyes go wide. She dives as a large metal easel flies past, crash. Sore and frustrated, Raven rolls to grab the fallen prism, reaching with her right hand. Right tools. Raven stops and looks towards the commotion. Aisles in the store. The same glowing outline picks up a pair of scissors. We watch as the hand reaches back and disappears as the scissors are launched through the air. Right tools. Another is chosen and thrown. Open space by the door. Looking at her own hands, Raven makes an L with her fingers. Her eyebrows perk up. She may have found the answer. Quickly grabbing the fallen prism, she sets it in its folder. As she runs off, we see that the placement of the three prisms has created a triangle outside the circle of salt. Aisles in the store. Fake eggs, paint, and cotton balls erupt into the air. Switching to another perspective, everything is blurry as we move swiftly down the aisles. Hey! The perspective turns to see a blurry raven. Is this what you're looking for? Raven's bur blurry hand lifts, and like sunlight bursting through a cloud, a pair of plastic wrap scissors are revealed. The label reads left-handed scissors.
Back to normal perspective, the outline of a, of a lanky ghost slowly materializes high above Raven. He was 65 when he died and like static from an old TV, parts of his body fade in and out of our reality. With his hands focused on the perfectly clear scissors, the disgruntled ghost's whole body fades into our reality. He is now completely transparent. Right, tools. <laughs> yeah, for the record, that's not the most helpful clue. As he reaches for them, Raven steps backwards. The lanky ghost follows her through the aisles. So why scissors? She gets a growl for an answer. Uh, I'm asking because I want to know. Uh, it's, it's not finished, not perfect. More details materialize. Raven sees splotches of paint stains his pants and shirt. So you're an artist. He nods. What were you working on before? Oh. oh. Though his mouth is open, the lanky ghost's eyes shift as he searches for the answer. He starts to flicker. Details fade away. It's okay. It's okay. I get it. You're devoted. That's why you didn't move on. I can't can't move on. Don't don't know how to. Yes, you can. I can help you. Help. His flickering slows. The details start to return. Yeah. Raven looks behind her. The register is in sight. We just have to- Mine. Taking his opportunity, the lanky ghost lunges. He grabs the scissors. Hey! Raven pulls back, the scissors flying out of their hands. The slick plastic wrapping causes the package to slide into the shadows. I was going to give them to you. <sighs> the lanky ghost growls. We switch to his perspective. It is now Raven who is perfectly, who is crystal clear. Floating higher, the details disappears as he lets out an echoing howl. The register goes crazy. Items that survived the first assault fall to the ground. Her breath quickens. Raven turns as, and runs. The lanky ghost gives chase, another aisle. As Raven runs, the trailing lanky ghost fades away. She turns the corner when smash, crates fall into her path. Shit. Dodging them, she's forced to run the other way. Third aisle. Crash, crash. Clay sculptures fall as the lanky ghost materializes behind Raven, center of the store. Jumping over the lines of salt, Raven arrives at the north point of the circle. As the lanky ghost crosses the salt, the prisms glow. The prisms glow. White vibrating light soars from the path of salt, extending up and perhaps through the ceiling. A fate of light has been, a field of light has been created. Bam, the lanky ghost hits and bounces off the field. Surprised and angry, he lets out a sound oh. no living person oh. can Okay, okay, hold on. Kneeling, Raven takes off her necklace. Her hands only mildly shaking, she kisses the crystal and holds it close to the north prism. Little white specks of light jump between the two crystals. The large prism turns bright red, like fire traveling on a line of gunpowder, energy travels to the second prism. It turns blue. Another line of energy travels to the third and final prism. It turns yellow. Specks of light travel up the field. A small circle of warm white light, a doorway, opens at the top. Astonished, the lanky ghost looks down to Raven. Smiling proudly, she puts her necklace back around her neck. I told you, I'm here to help. Gravity inside this field shifts. The lanky ghost is pulled towards the light. His face changes. He fights against it. No! But it's not done. The blue prism dims. The field flickers. The doorway shrinks. Raven takes off. Open area on the left. Desperate, Raven circles her crystal around the blue prism. Only a few white specks connect. Don't they say art is never finished? Slowly, the blue prism brightens. The field stabilizes. The doorway grows. You have to let go of the... He pulls harder. Electric, blue electricity surges through the field. The yellow prism fades, then the red prism, and finally the blue. The field flickers rapidly. The doorway shrinks. Please, just trust me. Never finished. 
screaming, the lank eagle pulls with all his strength. Raven ducks as thud, the doorway collapses. The field disappears and the prisms go dark. Escaping, the lanky ghost fades away. Emerging, rage, Raven watch. Emerging, Raven watches as a tumbleweed of ribbons roll across the now quiet building. Behind her, the door opens. What the hell? Murray Mole, fifty-six, owner of the design center, enters. Mr. Mole, well, as you can see, I was able to make contact. You, you got rid of him. Raven's pause gives Mr. Mole his answer. I can come back tomorrow night. Exterior, Mole's Design Center parking lot. That won't be necessary, Ms. Winters. Van tires screech to a halt. Two pairs of steel-toed shoes strut. The van door opens. Large cases are pulled into the light. The door slams shut. Bodies walk past the side of the truck to reveal steam siblings getting rid of what didn't stay dead. Interior, Moles Design Center, continuous. Raven Winters. Raven shudders as Paul Steam and his sister, Nancy Steam, both in their late 20s, both wearing clean, overpriced suits, walk in with dishonest smiles. Always a pleasure to see you, isn't it, sister dear? Always. <laughs> we should set up there and there. Works for me. As Nancy walks through Raven's circle of salt, she eyes the unlit prisms, shaking her head, smirks. I see you've downgraded since Casey left. State-of-the-art equipment hits the floor. Pieces snap into place. Mr. Mole, don't do this. Your ghost, he still thinks of himself as an artist. Artist? That ghoul has been doing nothing but terrorizing my employees and more importantly, my customers. Ghosts aren't ghouls, Mr. Mole. They're humans on the other side of life. 